Hi, my name is Justin Litton, and today we're going to be covering setting up a basic development environment for working with OpenSheet Music Display. This video will have four sections to it, each covering a different step in the process. The first section will go over some prerequisite knowledge that's good to have for working with OpenSheet Music Display. The second will be some of the tools you'll need to work with it, where to find them, some of the choices you'll have in that regard. Then we'll go over getting the code base down to your local machine and running the code base in a local web server. And finally, we'll open up the code and briefly go over some debugging. Okay, so first up is some prerequisite knowledge. First, OpenSheet Music Display is coded in TypeScript, so it will be very good and necessary even to know something about TypeScript, and some previous experience with it will definitely help. Here you can find the website at typescriptlang.org, and you can see here that it's an extension of JavaScript that adds types to it. Uh, I highly recommend, if you don't have any previous TypeScript experience, go to their website, check out some of the docs, uh, the handbook, and uh, perhaps even Google for some tutorials. There's a, there's a lot of material out there to learn TypeScript, um, and definitely, definitely get familiar with that before diving into OpenSheet Music Display. Second, it will be good to have, but perhaps not necessary immediately, in this video to uh, have some command line experience. Uh, so here I have the Windows command line open and also a Linux command line open. Uh, we're only gonna be doing a few basic commands today, but uh, any previous command line experience is also definitely going to be helpful. Uh, then some experience with Git and GitHub is gonna be helpful as well. Again, this might not be absolutely necessary that you've worked with it before because in the video today, we're not gonna be doing too many complicated commands. We'll do maybe just one, uh, but as you work more and more with OpenSheet Music Display and let's say you wanna submit a new feature to the repository, you're definitely gonna need to know some Git commands and be able to branch and um, merge back in and, and uh, you know, submit a pull request through through GitHub and, and so on and so forth. So um, if, you, if you'd like to familiar, familiarize yourself with Git a little bit, check out git-scm.com. They have documentation here. There's uh, video tutorials, it looks like. They have a reference manual, so check out some of that. And uh, likewise, GitHub here, uh, github.com is just a cloud-hosted version of Git with a lot of nice features, issues, and, and whatnot. And I believe they also have some uh, learning materials here on their website. So go ahead and uh, check those out if, if you haven't already. Okay, uh, next up, are the tools that we'll be using with OpenSheet Music Display. First, our IDE, our code editor, is going to be Visual Studio Code, located here at code.visualstudio.com. They have a download button for each of the major operating systems. You can get these binaries, and these are uh, wizard installers. They're very straightforward to install on your system, very simple. You, um, you can use another IDE or editor of your choice. Uh, however, this video and future videos are going to be working strictly with Visual Studio Code. Uh, and Visual Studio Code is highly recommended. It's uh, quite nice for working with TypeScript. Um, there's a lot of add-ons and, and plugins they have readily available that make it, make it a really nice IDE. Here quickly, I have it installed on my machine. You can get a little preview of what it looks like. Uh, so go ahead and grab that, get that installed. Next, we're going to need Node.js and NPM. Node.js is 
you can think of it as maybe server side or command line JavaScript. And NPM is the package manager for Node.js. It is a repository that holds all sorts of very useful libraries in JavaScript and TypeScript as well. And OpenSheet Music Display uses a lot of those libraries, and so uh, we need to get NPM as well as Node.js to do some building and uh, other tasks. So you can go ahead and grab that at nodejs.org. They have a downloads page. I'm here at the English version, slash en, slash download. Again, they, they have some straightforward installers, um, wizard installers for Windows, Mac OS. There's also uh, Linux binaries, pre-compiled binaries. Uh, perhaps more uh, convenient for Linux systems is they have a page for installing Node.js via Package Manager. And this is how I actually did it on my Linux system. Um, so you go ahead and find your distro in here. Um, for example, I'm running Debian on the Windows uh, subsystem for Linux here. And so I would do sudo apt-get install node.js and npm, something like that would do it. Now I already have it installed, so this is probably just going to tell me we already have it. Yeah, right here are the messages. But that's that's how you would do it. Uh, so you can go to their website and get get your um, command, or if you prefer, your binary installer, depending on your operating system. And since I've already mentioned this, I would highly recommend if you're running Windows, the Windows subsystem for Linux is is quite nice. It gives you a Linux command line, and uh, Linux command line is typically more powerful than the Windows one. Uh, I personally prefer it. Um, at least something to check out if you're not familiar with it. The installation process is fairly straightforward, and Microsoft has a nice guide on it here where uh, we'll include this lengthier link in the description of the video if you are interested in that. So go ahead and get Node.js, get that installed and set up. And we'll move on to the next package you'll need. And that's going to be Git. Again, we have some nice wizard installers that you can just download here. Or if you prefer, a command line installation via Linux would just be, the package is just going to be named Git. I already have it again, so it's showing up here. Um, this is a Debian and Ubuntu-based command. I would Google if you have another uh, package manager, another operate uh, distro, sorry, uh, I would just go ahead and Google and see what your package manager is and what your command might be to install Git. Or you can download it uh, here on their website, git-scm.com, and then slash downloads is their downloads page. I should mention, if you initially, at least, if you don't want to work with the Git command line, GitHub has a nice app out that's a straightforward GUI app called a GitHub Desktop. I actually find myself using this when I don't need to do complicated Git commands. They have an uh, installer here for Windows and Mac OS. They don't have it for Linux, unfortunately. But if you're running Windows or Mac OS, this is worth maybe taking a look at. Uh, it's got a nice GUI. Like I said, it does most, basic, most of the basic commands you're going to need, like branching and merging and and the like committing, of course. Um, you're not going to be able to do more advanced stuff with it, like merging across repositories, but uh, it, it's worth checking out if you want a more straightforward GUI application. It's, it's quite nice. Okay. Next is getting the code base down to our local machine and getting it running in a local web development server. So uh, the code is here hosted in GitHub at this URL, github.com slash OpenSheet Music Display slash OpenSheet Music Display. And we'll get the code by going over to the code download button here. We have a couple of options. If you have the GitHub desktop app that I mentioned earlier, you can simply directly click the link there. It'll, it'll link into the application and open it up for you there. 
I already have it open in the application, so it's not going to react. But if you don't yet have the repository there, it will prompt you to select a uh, folder and, and, and whatnot. And it takes care of that uh, stuff for you, which is it's a nice option. Uh, but I'm going to go through the command line way to do this. So we want to get this URL that's here. We have a clipboard copy, or you can do a control C and go over to your command line. I'm using the WSL, Windows Subsystem for Linux. So this is a Debian system I'm running right here in this command line. And we just want to do a git clone and then that URL we just copied. And what that'll do is we'll pull down the code base to our local machine. Let's see here, there it is, Open Sheet Music Display. It will name it by default the project name. You can specify a name if you wanted. So if I were to say git clone, and put the URL and then say open sheet music display tutorial and that's going to clone it into the local folder open sheet music display tutorial but I have already got it pulled down there so I'm going to just gonna go ahead and remove the tutorial one so to get us up and running you'd want to navigate into your code base folder, the root of the code base, which is here where we have source, test, demo, bin, our readme, etc, etc. And we're going to need to pull down all of our package dependencies with npm. So first command is npm install within the root of the project. And that's going to take a little bit of time. So I recommend if you need a cup of coffee, this would be a great time to go and get that. Okay, and we're all finished. And so it'll look a little bit like this towards the end. Uh, we will now have a node modules directory, and this contains all of our dependencies that have been installed, and so you can get a good idea that it was successful by that being present and no errors resulting from your install command. Next is starting our local development server. npm start will do this for us. Again, it takes a couple of seconds, not nearly as long as running an install, but you'll have a progress indicator here in percentage to let you know where we're at with starting the local development web server. So I'm going to go ahead and let that run. And we are started up. And so now we have a local web server at localhost port 8000. And here's our OpenSheet music display demo environment. And we see an instance of OpenSheet music display running here. and we know that our web server is working correctly. Okay, so now that our web server is running and we've got an instance of OpenSheet Music Display running, we're going to go ahead and open up our code base in Visual Studio Code here. So we'll go to File, Open Folder, and select the root of the folder of the code base, which I've selected here. And that's how you open up the project. You'll see our code base in the pa panel here. And we can browse through the code and it picks up all the type references and you'll get some nice autocomplete and stuff like that. So finally, debugging. To set up debugging, go here to the debug button, run and debug, Chrome, and that's going to create a launch.json file for you. And what we want to do is replace that with a launch.json file that we have on the wiki. Speaking of the wiki, there's a lot of good information on our wiki here github.com slash openSheetMusicDisplay slash openSheetMusicDisplay slash wiki. 
and a lot of the build and other instructions that I've gone over is also available here. So go ahead and check that out as well. But we want to look at the debugging section and specifically down here at the bottom, debugging in Visual Studio Code. Here's the launch.json that we want to use. And you'll need Google Chrome to do this. It doesn't work with other browsers currently. So I'm running Firefox here, but I also have Chrome installed and that's what I'll be using to debug with. So go ahead and just paste that in and save it. And then I'll go ahead and close that. And then we can just go ahead and click Start Debugging here. And that's gonna open up Chrome with our local web server instance open in it and we can debug. So for example, if I go here and set a breakpoint on our load, this is what loads our XML, our music XML documents and renders them in the browser. So I'm gonna put a breakpoint on that method there and just do a refresh. And we'll see here that that breakpoint was hit and we can step through the code as we would with any other code, any other IDE. And this is quite nice for really debugging uh, and going deep into the code if you need to. I should mention that you'll want to set your breakpoints after you have the browser open. So if I were to set this here before the browser's open, it's a little buggy and a little temperamental. So if I were to start the browser now, it's, it's probably not gonna pick that breakpoint up. But uh, as long as you just, just wait until you have the browser open first, it, it'll pick it up every time. Well, it worked there this time, but if you have trouble with that, uh, try resetting your breakpoint and that should resolve that. Mm -hmm.